My name is Janine Hamam and I live in um, London, Ontario and I am married and have five children, alhamdulillah. Um, I have been Muslim now for about 22 years. I came from a Christian family, a very, very wonderful, wonderful family. Um, I met my husband when I was 17 and I married shortly after when I was 18. And um, alhamdulillah, we've been happy ever since. And I'm every day I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing me with, with the gift of Islam and the gift of the Ahl al-Bayt. Alhamdulillah, when I uh, was engaged with my husband, he was still teaching me about Islam. So he would go to the, the Husseiniyah around, around where he lived. And then he would come to my house after and tell me everything because all the... All the like, lectures were in Arabic, so he would come and explain to me about Islam. And I, I realized what a beautiful religion it was. Like, it was so pure and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't complicated. Um, so, of course, when he explained to me about Islam, he explained about the Ahl al-Bayt. He taught me about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He would go to Muharram, the Muharram program, and then he would come and tell me, all about it in his own way and then I, I was very touched about um, the stories that he told me. Alhamdulillah when I got married I also did the Shahada, I became Muslim and I was very happy and very excited and um, there was a very little unit that the, the brothers and sisters in the community rented out so I would go there and then all my, my husband's friends wives would explain to me what's going on because <clears throat> everything was in Arabic so I was just learning Arabic in those days. Alhamdulillah, now I speak Arabic, but um, I didn't understand anything basically. But Alhamdulillah, with the support of the sisters, sometimes I would whisper to them and, and I would say, what is he saying now? And they would, you know, explain to me what's going on. So Alhamdulillah, like I understood, but it didn't really deeply like get into my soul at that time in my life. I was very young and I, I think because it was in Arabic, I didn't understand, like really, it was, into, it was later on that I really understood more about, um, about the Ahl al-Bayt. Alhamdulillah, my parents were very supportive <clears throat> because they loved the akhlaq of my husband. And this is the main thing that we have to focus on as Muslims, our akhlaq. When we have good akhlaq, then people will will want to speak with us and want to learn from us. So because he was such a polite and wonderful person, my parents felt that I would be in good hands with him. And that's why they accepted that I would marry him and become Muslim. I think definitely anyone who change, changes their religion, there's going to be challenges. Um, I think the main, main thing is just the ignorance of the society. Like, unfortunately, so many people don't really know the pure Islam. They only base their knowledge on what's in the media. So of course my parents were a little bit worried in the beginning, you know, as someone from a different country, my husband is from Lebanon, different country, different culture, different language, different religion. It's a lot to deal with with your 18 year old daughter who you love so much and, and cherish so much. It's not easy. And I really, I pray every day for my parents for the support that they gave me, Alhamdulillah. So um, challenges, I think, like, you know, just different things, understanding about tahara, understanding about, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, drink or, or, you know, eat this kind of meat. And, you know, those little things, household things um, are a little difficult. And I think also the hijab was difficult for them to understand. Uh, I think nowadays, this is 22 years later, alhamdulillah, in the Canadian society, you see so many more people wearing hijab, so many more Muslims. But at that time, it wasn't that popular. So um, I think that was a little, bit, a little bit difficult for them. And it was also difficult when my daughter, she was nine and she wanted to wear the hijab. I think it was difficult for them. But um, then they, when they realized it was really her that wanted to wear the hijab, and, and now that they, they realize how successful she has been in her life, 
and how it's been a good thing for her, I think they, alhamdulillah, they, they understand now and they have respect for it. My first experience, well, like I mentioned before, I used to go to the, the little center and then um, uh, the ladies there would tell me kind of what's going on and everything. It didn't really give a big impact on me in those days. I do have a little, a, a little funny anecdote. I did go to a different center once. We wanted to try a different uh, a center. So I wasn't used to the whole thing of ladies on one side, men on the other. So my husband kind of dropped me at the door and said, okay, you'll be okay. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I went inside and there was, everyone was wearing, mashallah, big black uh, chadors. And I wasn't used to that. But I, 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 I didn't, like, it wasn't a big problem for me because I was always very open to different cultures. And, and I liked the fact that everybody was all you know, together and sitting very humbly and listening to the lecture, even though I didn't understand. Um, Alhamdulillah, I always had a very good feeling. I was very, I always felt very welcome in all the centers that I attended. Alhamdulillah. In those days, because the, the language was a problem, what I would do is, what I would do was remember what the stories that my husband told me, and then I would kind of, if I could understand a name, like if I could hear them say the word Hussein, then I would start thinking about Imam Hussein and, and what happened to him. Especially I remember, I knew the, the main story that stuck out in my mind, even though it wasn't directly connected with Karbala, I kept thinking about Sayyida Fatima and she was such a role model for me. So whenever the ladies would start crying, I would just start crying and thinking about Sayyida Fatima and what happened to her and how she was oppressed. So that, that made, you know, that made me emotional and, and start to, to cry like the other ladies. But it wasn't until um, later on, um, about 13 years ago, when we moved to London, um, I had a neighbor and she was kind of wondering if we were Shia or, so, you know, or in maybe another school of thought. And then when I told her my kids' names, she, she's thinking, okay, I think, I think this, this family is Shia. So she, I think she asked me, I said, yes, yes, we're Shia. She said, Oh, okay, alhamdulillah, I have to tell you about this place. Um, it's the mosque and we do English lectures. We had, we had already been going to a, an Arabic mosque. And when I heard that, when I heard that there would be lectures in English, I was so excited. So she took me and um, I went to all the programs. They had like all different fun programs and um, like for all the different walada and wafats. And I remember my first Muharram feeling so emotional that now all these stories had come to life and now I could really feel and really cry from my heart for all the stories about, about Imam Hussein and Sayyida Zainab and, and all, the, all the people who suffered in Karbala. So that was, I think, a big thing for me, being able to listen to the lectures in English. And that's when it really, really started to make an impact on me and in my life. Being brought up in a in a Western society, you don't really have that that atmosphere very often that you're sitting with people crying all around you. I had never had that in my life. Um, I think that's what I always loved about the Eastern culture. Also, that they're very warm, they're very hospitable, they're very emotional, and I was exposed to that in high school with my friends. I had some friends from the Middle East, uh, even way before I met my husband. So I always loved that that kind of that, you know, the, the family gatherings. And so when everyone was crying, I could feel the pain. I could feel the emotion. So that's why it was easy for me to cry. And I just kept thinking, holding on to that thought about Sayyida Fatima and the way, the way they treated her. I thought about, you know, losing her baby and how they could do that to the, 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 the daughter of the Prophet. So it was very easy for me, very easy for me. I did take my mother once to a wafat. I think it was wafat of Imam Jafar al-Sadiq And she was very touched. It was also an English lecture and she felt it was very spiritual and everyone in the mosque was so, so nice to her. And uh, alhamdulillah, like I, I've always worried because I know Westerners are not used to seeing a lot of people wearing black. You know, I think it bothers them. It, it's, it's foreign to them. They don't, you know, they don't understand. Even funerals, my parents, they don't wear black. So to, to have everybody in the mosque wearing black, I think it would be a little bit much, much for them. But I, I do remember that my mom felt very, very at home because everyone was so nice to her. 
And I think that's very important for people to remember that if they do have guests coming to their mosque or their centers, that they should be very kind because it's the akhlaq. It's the akhlaq. This is the main reason that the Prophet came, came to, to us to improve the akhlaq of people. So we have to remember this. It's the way we, we act in the mosque and out of the mosque, it's, it's a very um, important, important thing. If you have good akhlaq, if you're very welcoming and kind, just like the Prophet was and the Ahl al-Bayt was, then you attract people. You attract people to Islam and then inshallah they will, they will know the truth, the real people who we are, not what they read in the news. Last year we did um, a Who is Hussein campaign. We did our own little one here in London. Alhamdulillah, we had about 50 people from our mosque participate. So we had flags and we, we didn't do really a, pr a procession. What we did was we went to the main park in our, in our downtown and we had uh, tables set up with bookmarks and pamphlets. And we just had like a few volunteers stand at those tables. And then as people were walking by, we would just tell them, tell them little things like, have you heard of Imam Hussein? And just friendly in a friendly way, give out a pamphlet. And we also had water bottles uh, that had labels on them, just saying a quote from Imam Hussein, just to bring awareness. Um, it went well. People were very, you know, I even had this one man come up to me and said, oh, are you taking donations? Do you, do you need money for something? I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> we're, we're giving to you. We're giving you this water in the name of Imam Hussein. Oh, who's that? You know, so it, was, it, it went well. I think for next year, inshallah, First of all, it was rainy. It was really rainy. So inshallah, next year, we'll pray for some sunshine and get more people passing by. Um, I think one mistake we made was we did have flags that were in English with some quotes from, from uh, Western philosophers, Gandhi, and you know, different people that people could connect with. I think we did have a lot of flags that were written in Arabic. I think maybe that was um, a mistake because most of the people in that park were all like Canadian, Canadian English speaking, so they wouldn't understand what the, the, the flags said. So I think for us, maybe in other, other countries it would work really well. If there was maybe a big Arabic speaking community, it would work well. But for us, I think maybe just to stick with the English would be, would be better next time. But Alhamdulillah, it went well. Alhamdulillah. As, as principal of our madrasa here in London, uh, I think the first year I, I said we have to do a play because when I was a teenager I used to act and, and do things like that. So I thought I, I better bring my old skills into an Islamic way and um, have the kids, you know, do a, do a play about Imam Hussein. And um, it was really, really time consuming to prepare. I had the kids come over and practice their lines and I had all the costumes ready and everything. So it was really fun and creative, um, but it also, the main purpose of it was that so all the madrasa children could actually see what happened in Karbala, rather than just going to the Husseini, listening to the lecture, seeing everyone wearing black. I wanted them to really know what happened. So what we did was um, we wrote our, our own play, and we just kind of began at the story when Imam Hussein, uh, Imam Hussein leaves the Hajj, and then his journey and then what happens in Karbala, and um, all the different sad stories that happen, Habib ibn Mudahir, and Ali Akbar, and, and Qasim, and all, all the stories, so that the children are performing, and, and they're feeling like what, what it would be like to be Qasim right now, what it would, be, what would it feel like to be, to be the, the Layla, you know, the mother of, uh, of you know, Ali Akbar, and the mother of Ali Azhar, and so, um, and at the end, you know, of course, I was backstage and like, you know, yelling at the kids, come back here and put your costume and this. It was very hectic and very crazy. But when it was over, I actually had parents in tears. And because the last scene, the last scene of the play was when Imam Zain Labadin is in his chains and walking, walking to Sham, um, with Sayyidah Zainab and all the children are behind them. So... So when they, um, when they came up to me, I said, Alhamdulillah, you know, they said, sister, we felt that we were there. We really felt that we were there with Imam Hussein. And Alhamdulillah, like I had no idea that people would actually really, you know, 
would would really like the play that much. Like I was very happy that despite